So when it comes to editing, let's be honest with ourselves, we're OCD and that means that we're never ever happy with our project, we're never ever done. But at a certain point we have to kick this stuff out for public consumption, uh, so that's what we're going to cover today. Uh, we want to export our finished project uh, to a QuickTime movie and then take that QuickTime movie into iDVD and burn a DVD. So first of all, um, we're all done here, our build is good, the video looks good, the audio sounds good. So we need to set an out point. So let's hit Shift Z to make sure we see everything in our timeline. Okay, good. We don't have any extraneous stuff out here. So what I'm going to do just to ensure that we're not getting any extraneous stuff is come to the end of my project. I'm going to hit end. That's end, like end of the sidewalk. And, and then I'm going to hit the key O, all right, to set an out point here for my project, all right? Now the next thing I'm going to do is go through and select all the audio, okay, and just hit Option Command R, and that is going to go through and it's going to render all my audio for me. Okay, the reason I like to do that is because occasionally I've run into problems in the past where because I didn't render things out, it created glitches in the finished QuickTime file for whatever reason. You don't really run into the same problem by not uh, rendering your video because when you kick it out, it renders the video and it does it without really ever creating any problems for you. So don't worry about rendering the video, just make sure your audio is all rendered. And let's see, it looks like we're good. So we're ready to export our QuickTime movie. So to do that, uh, you can either hit Command E or come up to your file menu, come down to export and QuickTime movie. Okay, so I'm gonna call this Iker build, all right? And then down here in our settings, we wanna make sure that we're using the current settings. That's just gonna kick it out in uh, the codec and the, the preset that we have set up for our timeline. So we're using a high definition format which in this case is just fine because iDVD will actually downsize and transcode all this stuff uh, to work on a standard definition DVD. In fact it's actually preferable in my opinion to export things in high definition because you don't have to worry about uh, aspect ratio conversion and things like that. So use current settings, make sure you include audio and video, don't worry about any markers and you want to make sure that this makes movie self-contained is checked otherwise you'll run into problems so make sure that's checked we're good to go here and let's click save and it's going to render out for us okay now that that's done we can command H hide out of Final Cut and then we're going to go down to our dock and open up IDVD if it's not on there look in your applications folder just pop this open Okay, now by default mine comes up with an old project, but what we want to do is come to File, and go New, okay, and so we're going to create a new iDVD project, we'll call this Iker Build, something like that, and we want to, because our project was a 16 by 9, a, a wide aspect ratio, we want to make sure our DVD is wide as well, so make sure this widescreen 16 by 9 is checked, so hit Create, Okay, good. Now we have these different uh, DVD splash menu templates that we can use and really we just want something simple. So let's just pick, oh I don't know, something like this. That's fine. Okay, and now what we're going to do is import our movie. Okay, so we can go file and import video. Okay, and I just have it here in documents. And so I'm going to come down here to ikerbuild.mov and click import. All right, that's going to drop that right here. And we know this is, it's all right because we've got this yellow button there. Okay, now I'm going to click on this where it says ikerbuild and type in play. Okay, and then I'm going to click up here where it says soft frame main, click once, click twice, and then I'm going to type in iker build up here okay because this one isn't a button and it's just sort of the well it's the title of the DVD splash so now we can change the font face if we want to we can take it like Futura something like that okay now we can change this to like condensed extra bold or something take the size up if we want to change the color we can hit command I and it'll bring up this little text info HUD and we can change the color by clicking on that swatch there bumping this up. Let's just take it to a white, close that, pop a shadow in there, 
close that down voila all right we're good to go and now you see right here we have these drop zones and these are where we can put uh, and these are where we can put pictures uh, video anything like that right now guys I'm just gonna leave it blank but uh, for your build if you want to take some of the pictures uh, that we had uh, for the project and just drop them in here okay all right so one more thing before we do anything before we actually burn the DVD uh, is we want to come up here to our project project info and now we're gonna set our encoding uh, bitrate okay we said video mode NTSC that's good aspect ratio widescreen that's good DVD type single layer yes now over here where it says encoding right now by default it's set on best performance and that's going to enable you to kick this thing out really really quickly but it's not going to look quite as good. So we have two other options. We have high quality, which is another single pass format, but it's a higher bit rate. And we have professional quality, which is a double pass variable bit rate, but it looks really, really good. Uh, right now, we don't want to spend that much time, so we're going to click on high quality, uh, which will just set it at a constant bit rate, and it won't take nearly as long. So it says yes, change encoding mode, OK. So high quality, close that down, and now you are ready to burn. So click right here and it's going to prompt you for a DVD and and in this case I don't have anything in the drop zone it says oh no we got a problem here don't worry about it uh, just continue burning like I said it'll pop open your DVD uh, slot and you pop in a DVD burn it and you're good to go